Hey fun fans, before we get to this video, I want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been spreading the word of fun to help us stay Lob Light Independent through your donations, bits, and subscriptions, and also to the sponsors of this segment, PTC. PTC currently has the Robots to the Rescue Challenge going on where you can earn a share of $7,000 for your team by designing a robot that helps solve a current world problem at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. All right, and let's start it off. Trevor, let's take it away. All right, so we're kicking it back to 1993 with one of the first chairman's definitions that we could find. So the chairman's awards are presented to the team, which is judged to have created the best partnership effort between a school and university or between a school and business. Judging is based on participation, teamwork, sportsmanship, creativity, team spirit. It's shown, as always, as to be the most prestigious prestigious and kind of sought out award documentation on how teams would actually do this is they would create a up to 30 minute video with photos or written stuff. And that would be sent directly to first. This then would to showcase at the championship, as we all know, and then the award continued to evolve in like that sort of same pattern, changing a little over time, until about 1996, where they reduced the video footage up to a 15-minute way and created now an electronic side, to side on a documentation, taking it back onto Windows 2 and Macintosh 5, based on one file with all documents still always being sent straight to first. But for the first time, they gave a few tips on how to help. With awards going into great detail of the game itself is not exactly what they're looking for. More on how do they emphasize and help on the partnership. And quality of video did not really play a factor in, in it at all. And then with the help of Chief Delphi, we were able to find a 1998 testimony from the Hot team, which was a Hall of Fame team in around 2001 in the early 2000s, with them emphasizing how Chairman Still was going around in mess of teams sending physical materials to first, with one of their main things being in those years, first was with the top five teams and then announced the winners of those five. I remember the first team 16, the bomb squad, was in Amu Mitchum for four or five years before winning the championship chairmans. After several years, first decided the method was getting out of hand and too much scent was being sent to them each year. So the rule would change. At the, same, at the time, teams had to submit a video up to 10 minutes in length. This then evolved into the executive summaries and giant and 10,000 character essays that we now know. But really, it came into 2001 that we really got a hold of how the executive summary really was, with this being one of the first ones with the requirements that you also had to go for the chairman's awards. On the on the requirements side, it was still up to that video, and but yeah, but now CD ROMs were not acceptable, and they were limiting the amount of page size you could do. With this being no more then 12 inches wide, 12 inches long, and 3 inches high. And then 2001 brought into, additionally, the first executive summary, which was gradually different than what we know it to now. Looking at your sponsors, the numbers you participated, your female students, male students, the sponsors actively involved, the teachers involved, a brief description of the impact in first programs, partnership, community, fundraising, 
a hundred words on why you think you should win and any other additional additional material that you thought was necessary. This then evolved into 2003, where submission format was about the same, but has changed slightly so. But 2003 brought, I found a very interesting thing in the chairman's description. Because the chairman award recognized sustained excellence and impact, not just a one-year team effort, it is difficult for a first-year rookie team to receive this honor. However, rookie teams are still encouraged to enter a submission. It's a great way to document your team's efforts and impact. So at this time, by 2003 standards, a rookie could win the chairman's award. With that being the entire whole description of it. And then the submission format changed into... You are limited to four single-sided eight and a half by eleven pages of content. That's all you had. All any text or image that you could get in there with your interview, which started a little earlier in ni- around nineteen ninety-seven, and then as the years went on, they made a few little changes by two thousand six. They made it so that team captain and student representatives started to be a thing. So that way that all the contained information is completed and accurate. And at this 2006, they set the stone that rookies could not interview and not win chairman's anymore. Where Aiden can come on help from kicking it back into 2013 to 20. For a more in for a more modern day chairmans, as there's not really much in between two thousand seven and two thousand twelve. So yeah, like like uh, Trevor said, there's not a lot of changes between two thousand six and two thousand or two thousand seven and two thousand twelve to chairmans. Uh, in twenty thirteen, there were a few changes to chairmans, uh, specifically that uh, the executive summary would be focusing on. Um, we're going to have seven fields now, and you should be focusing on only the last two years of outreach, innovation, role models, uh, role modeling for different teams, uh, partnership strengths, and communication to the general first community. Uh, in the past, you could look at your entire team's history, but as first continued to move on and we're gaining a, a longer time span since the starting of, of FRC, it became necessary to limit the amount of time that you can look at uh, when you are presenting your chairman's award. And then as we move into 2014, they're bumping that up from uh, just seven fields of 500 characters to 12 fields in your executive summary, which is a lot. I mean, you look at 12 fields with 500 characters, you're already up to uh, 6,000 characters, and that's before the main essay. And as well in 2014, first directed you to focus on, um, not so much to focus, but to particularly uh, highlight your involvement with the various forms of first programs like FRC, FTC, FLL, and FLL junior teams. Uh, The transition to those types of focuses uh, was the beginning of FIRST's initial push to change their uh, topic or to change their um, guidelines to focus on FIRST internal programs rather than external initiatives outside of the FIRST uh, sphere. And then as we move into 2015, um, we're looking at a clarification of the definitions for chairmans. They, they meaning first, decided to define levels of support and levels of effort for uh, working with other first teams as well as working with first events. Uh, the levels of support for first teams was either starting, mentoring, assisting, or publishing resources for other teams. And the reason they changed to s- define each specific level was in the past, teams had said, well, we started another team, when in reality, they may have just been advising the mentors to start that team. So clearly defining the different levels of effort in working with a team or working with an event uh, would allow first to more definitively decide uh, chairman's winners by their actual level of 
uh, support and effort put into each of their initiatives as a team. And I think I forgot to mention the different levels for working with events. And so with events, the different levels were running an event, hosting an event, or assisting with event support. Um, so that type of uh, definition was a big change to chairman's, uh, where in the past, first was pretty pretty lax with uh, wording and definitions for, for how you interacted with other teams. It's, it, it became significantly more strict. It was a big change to the way uh, chairman's was administered. Yep, wearing and, a small thing in 2014 is they moved from a two-year time span to two to five-year time span that with these additional executive summaries, the teams had a greater span to help look at which they've kept up to now. Right, I did I did miss that. And it, like like you said, in 2013, it became uh, two years of outreach. And in 2014, they increased that time span. Obviously, they're looking at the changes between years and, and noticing um, the impact that that change had in 2013 and reacting to it in 2014 by extending the time span to five years out. Uh, as we move into uh, 2019, um, a big jump from, from 2015 to 2019 is that uh, that push towards FIRST programs that started in 2014 got even stronger in 2019 when FIRST clarified in a blog post that FIRST-related programs like FLL, uh, FTC, FLL Junior, and FRC would take priority over external programs, uh, which started to push FRC teams that were supporting VEX programs, uh, push the VEX programs out of their chairman's submissions to some extent uh, put a specific focus on internal programs rather than uh, allowing teams to uh, subsist on working with external, uh, I guess you could say competitors or maybe uh, co coexisting programs with FIRST. Uh, that was a big change and somewhat controversial uh, to an extent to have FIRST really push for that only internal focus um, that had already started in 2014 but got really strong in 2019. Uh, and as we're moving now into 2020, uh, or already have moved into 2020, uh, the big change between 2019 and 2020 uh, wasn't really all that big, but some people were frustrated by it. And it was that instead of picking an interview slot in this year in 2020, it was changed to where uh, teams would get a randomized interview slot for chairmans at uh, the event they chose to the events they chose to compete for chairmans. In the past, you could pick a slot uh, or sign up for a slot at uh, your at your event uh, for either day, uh, but now that's been changed for 2020. And um, there was also a, a different documentation form for 2020, uh, and FRC Team 3847 Spectrum. Uh, created a more editable version for that documentation uh, this year, which you can uh, see on screen now. With that, I believe we are moving into um, some advice from Ryan. Uh, yes. We have some stuff. Yeah, I do want to interject, actually. Um, one big change that occurred to Chairman's history that was kind of a big deal in 2017 was first brought back in a sense, the Chairman's Award Finalist Award. Mm. Uh, so what happened was, as previously mentioned, in the early years of Chairman's, mainly before regional Chairman's even started, first used to recognize the top couple teams for the award, then give out a winner. In 2007, they stopped this recognition. And 10 years later, in 2017, they brought it back as the Chairman's Award Finalist where at Champs, they would reveal the top three teams in the morning. And then at the end of the day, one of these teams would be upgraded, in a sense, to the Championship Chairman's Award winner. And it kind of shook up the Championship Chairman scene a bit, because it had been a decade since we started getting previews into the runner-ups. And it kind of transformed a bit Chairman's analysis and what people looked for in the coming years. And with that, we've gone through our pretty long history of this award. It's been around for a long time. I mean, since the beginning of the organization itself. So um, I want to thank you guys for sticking through. 
and uh, <clears throat> coming along with us on that journey. If you guys have any questions for here that we might have not hit that you guys might have, please go on ahead and uh, tag us at First Updates now, and we'll go through and we'll be able to we'll gladly answer that question. Um, oh, there's a comment. Uh, yeah, I, I can yeah. I can take that comment real quick. Um, yeah, so the that software dude is uh, made a comment in chat about how his team would lose large sponsors uh, if he if they started first teams rather than focusing on Vex teams. So for their team, uh, it, it became difficult to focus on chairmans rather than engineering inspiration since chairmans had that uh, FRC or rather first only focus and pushed away Vex. Um, and I think that's uh, that's really valid. That's a, a serious concern for some teams that are very uh, vex heavy or or other programs, uh, potentially even uh, Acra, which is a program out in Michigan uh, similar to FRC that a lot of teams work with out there. Uh, it it is concerning that that change happened for those teams. It's a major change. And that's why I said before it was it was very controversial when it happened, and it, for some teams it is still uh, controversial, and it's a big concern now. And something yeah, that I wanted to mention that I think we we looked over that we wanted to talk about was the Alaire medal, and I think Ryan uh, was going to mention a little bit about that if you could, because that's something that not a lot of teams and not a lot of people know about. Yeah, that's Ab true. Yep, absolutely. So for those of you who haven't heard of it. The Allaire Medal is actually a additional award that is given to the Championship Chairman's Award winning team. Uh, it is a scholarship that the team will nominate a junior or senior for, and it gives them $10,000 in scholarship support for that student's college career. Um, it is not very well documented. It is something that kind of has a foggy past. In fact, it's kind of up in the air when the medal even started and fun fact even less known you're actually allowed to split it up between two seniors if you have two really incredible people on your team 1902 and 1538 at least both awarded two Allaire medals to their students yeah I, on I only just heard about that um about the Allaire medal uh, when we started doing the research for the show, I, I'd never heard of it before, and it, it was totally new to me. I didn't think, um, I didn't think that anything like that existed. It was, I, I thought it was really interesting to hear that there are these like little nooks and crannies in in current FRC that very few people know about. Yeah, the earliest I was finding was around two thousand one, of where it started. So yeah, that's true. Awesome to think back that even in like early 2000s, first was helping the Hall of Fame teams through their college careers with a little effort. This video is brought to you in part by PTC. Look, during this time, it's important to look for challenges to keep your skills up and to help your team in fun development. The Robots to the Rescue Challenge can help you accomplish both by designing a robot that solves a real world problem with a chance to win a share of over $7,000 for your team. Click the link in the description to get started at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.